This is the most valuable book ever shown on Antiques Roadshow, and it's from an episode way back in 1990. We seem to have a fabulous copy of the first edition of Tolkien's The Hobbit. So today we're going to have a look at that book and find out what it was worth back then. So, what do you think it's worth? I've never Obviously, had it valued. I have it's absolutely your, you know, it's a no family idea. Thing. But that's not all. We'll also discover what's happened to it since and find out what it's worth today. So let's play the clip. We seem to have a, a fabulous copy of uh, a first edition of Tolkien's The Hobbit. That's exactly what it looks like, a decent copy of the first edition of The Hobbit, which was printed in September 1937 in a small edition. There were only 1,500 copies of the first edition produced. So let's investigate. Now, the first thing I want to see is the condition of the dust wrapper. Ah, did you catch that there when he opened it up? I think there might be more to this than just the book. Um, it's a little bit chipped, but I don't think particularly badly for its age. Um, first edition freaks, I'm afraid, really insist on dust wrappers. First edition freaks? I'm insulted, but he does have a point. It can seem quite freakish to outside observers that in the rare book market with a book like The Hobbit, the dust wrapper on its own or the presence of it with the book can account for 90 plus percent of that book's value. It, they are rare. People used to take them off and uh, lose them and all that. And from what we can see so far, this dust strapper isn't in great condition. It's there, which is better than what can be said for the majority of copies, but it's very chipped and it's very worn. This isn't abnormal for a book like The Hobbit. The paper that's used for the dust strapper for the first edition of The Hobbit, it's very brittle. You very rarely see a very clean top line and a very clean bottom line. There's always wear along both sides. But in this case, we've not just got wear, we've got chips and we've got loss. So it's not a great example of the dust jacket. Yeah, shall we say. Um, and then a complete knockout. I mean, he says it's a complete knockout, but that dark tape staining there makes me want to be sick. Please never, ever, ever put sellotape in your books. It will leave that horrible dark brown residue on that page forever. It's just as safe for protecting whatever you want to store inside the book to just lift it up and slip it inside on its own. You don't need to sellotape it down. So here, wonderful letter, my dearest Jane, here is a copy of my little book, which I send you with much love. Now this is good and it makes me very, very excited because most of the time where you find letters stuck into books, they're not particularly related to this copy of the book in question. They might be written by the author themselves, but very often the book and the letter are separate entities that at some point people have stuck together. But in this case, we know it to be different because Tolkien is saying in the letter, Jane, here's a copy of my book. And then lo and behold, that is the book we have in front of us. So the letter and the book absolutely belong together. And so on and so on. And I hope it will amuse you. Your loving Ronald. Now, who is Jane? Do you know, is this a family? I'm not certain who Jane is, mm -hmm. but I know that it's a distant relative. I, I believe it was an aunt of J.R.R.'s. Aunt Jane was a woman who Tolkien was incredibly close to and had a great influence on his life. He developed this close relationship with her in particular after the death of his father and the illness of his mother where he went to stay with her. And not only that, in the 1920s, Aunt Jane lived on a farm in Worcestershire and the locals used to refer to that farm as Bag End. And years later, it was Aunt Jane who wrote Tolkien a letter and convinced him to produce the book that became The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, which was published just a few months before her death. So we have an incredibly poignant and intimate copy of The Hobbit in front of us in this clip. The date of the letter is the 22nd of September 1937, and that date is very important because the publication date of The Hobbit was just the day before. So we're not just looking at the first edition of The Hobbit, one of 1500 copies, we're looking at one of a very small number that Tolkien first laid his hands on. Turning over to the front free end paper, I see another signature here for Auntie Jane from Ronald. This book just keeps getting better and better. It's very rare for Tolkien to write out a full inscription in a book, though lots of other authors do this. Often when he was giving a book to someone, even someone he knew well, he would just sign his name in it. So this makes it much more personal. And not only that, he hasn't signed it J.R.R. Tolkien, he signed it Ronald, something he reserved only for those very closest to him.
I assume Ronald, I mean JR's, uh, JRR's mm -hmm. um, uh, Aunt Jane, right. and Simon Tolkien? Yes, that's my husband. He, the book came to him when the library, when JRR's library was broken up. This is lovely because books from Tolkien's library have different marks of provenance on them depending on what happened to the books after Tolkien died. Ones that were immediately sold after his death often have these small white posthumous library labels. But books that came from Tolkien's library and stayed in the family often have inscriptions like this. These books went to his children or grandchildren in the main and you'll have the recipient's name and then underneath it in a beautiful calligraphic, almost elvish script from the library of J.R.R. Tolkien. So to track the provenance, this book came from Tolkien to Aunt Jane. We know that because of the letter and the inscription. It then, at the time of Tolkien's death, was in his library. So I assume after Aunt Jane died, Tolkien got her books back. And then after Tolkien's death, it stays in the family by passing down to Simon. There's one other point about a first edition of uh, this book. Let me take the book out. This is for dust wrapper freaks. Um, Tolkien, in fact, corrected this dust wrapper himself. There's actually no evidence that Tolkien did this himself. There's no way that the author of the book would be burdened with the task of a clerical correction like that. There's no way Tolkien was going to sit down, although he was a stickler for detail, and ink out personally 1,500 dust jackets. Or at least it is said that he corrected it himself. Mm -hmm. There is a mistake on these two notes, or on one of these notes on the end papers here. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've ever noticed it before. No, I haven't. Well, it is a point. Dodgson here. But yes, this is something you will only find on a first edition dust wrapper of The Hobbit. The name Dodgson, as in Charles Dodgson, the real name of Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, is misspelled on the back flap of the dust jacket. And so in most copies, you find this small circular ink correction on that flap. So a first edition freak is not only looking for his first edition, he's looking for a first edition with a dust wrapper, he's looking for a first edition with a corrected dust wrapper. <laughs> well, actually, being a bit pedantic, it doesn't matter to the value of the jacket whether it's corrected or not. The value is in the mistake being there because the mistake is what indicates that it's the first edition dust jacket, not the correction. He's looking for a nice inscription like this and then possibly a letter. He's got everything. <laughs> Absolutely, he is right about all the rest. This is just about everything you could possibly want from a copy of the first edition of The Hobbit. Mm. So, um, what do you think it's worth? Have you had it? Yeah, I've never obviously, had it valued. I have it's absolutely your, you know, it's a no family idea. Thing. You don't really, you don't really want mm. to think too much further than that. So this clip was filmed in 1990, over 10 years before the first Peter Jackson film came out. And there was huge interest in Tolkien's writing already, of course. But let's have a look at what they valued it at back then. I would say that this would fetch at auction, or some collector would be very happy to pay three and a half thousand pounds for it. Wow, that is amazing. Three and a half thousand pounds, wow. That is an absolute bargain. And it's not just a bargain by today's standards and today's market. That would have been a bargain even way back in 1990. And that's because in 1989, a copy in similar condition, but didn't have the letter with it and wasn't signed by Tolkien, sold for £2,640. So not far off this valuation. And then the next year in 1991, we do have a more accurate copy to compare it to. It was sold at an auction in New York, the Library of Richard Manny. This is the original auction catalogue. And we can see here a photograph of that copy of The Hobbit. And if we go back one page, we can see its description. It was lot 297 in that sale, and it was inscribed to the Jennings family, one of whom, although she was only age 10 at the time that The Hobbit was published, would become the poet Elizabeth Jennings. And that didn't sell for three and a half thousand that sold for $19,800. So I think it's fair to say that this copy, even back then, was worth more than three and a half thousand pounds. But what's happened to the book since? It's one of those questions that's so tantalizing about the roadshow. Did they keep it? Did they sell it? What's happened to it? Where is it now? They kept it in the family until July 2003, just a few months before Peter Jackson's Return of the King came out. But it's not in the family anymore. 
And we know that because we can find this very copy of The Hobbit that we've been looking at today in this auction catalogue. It was sold at this auction in London as lot 469 in the last portion of the sale. And we can see here exactly the book we've been looking at today. We've got the dust jacket with those chips and wear. We've got the letter to Aunt Jane that is dated the 22nd of September 1937. And we've got his inscription for Auntie Jane from Ronald with much love. And at that sale in 2003, it didn't sell for three and a half thousand pounds. It sold for 48,000 pounds, which begs the question, 20 years after that sale and 30 years after the initial valuation, what's the book worth today? Well, the Tolkien market has moved on a lot since 1990, and it's even moved on a lot since 2003. That Elizabeth Jennings copy that sold for $19,000 in 1991 reappeared for sale in 2005, where it made a whopping $78,000. So what about Aunt Jane's copy valued at a few thousand pounds in 1990 before selling for tens of thousands a decade later? Well, I think you could take that original valuation of 3,500 pounds, add two zeros to it, and still have collectors queuing up to add that holy grail to their Tolkien library.